How's it going? I'm going to show you FIO voting with FIO.blocks.io and the Anchor mobile wallet. Super easy. Go in here to log in, click on Anchor, and then in, in your mobile device, go ahead and scan that QR code. And you can pick which account you want to log in as. Go ahead and just click Log In. Do your Touch ID. And it's that simple. You'll be logged right into Blocks.io. And from there, you can go ahead and view your account up at the top here and uh, verify that you got the right account that you're logged into. See all your account history, that kind of stuff. You can go ahead and go over to your wallet. And there's a bunch of great features here. You can register FIO addresses. You can check your addresses and domains. You can uh, manage your addresses. You can also vote. And that's what we're going to show here today. So go ahead and click on... Uh, you generally want to vote for all 30 block producers, but I'm just going to vote for one right here. And again, you just click sign, back to your mobile wallet, pops right up. You can look at the details and verify everything that you're about to do. Just go ahead and click sign again, give it your thumbprint, and that's pretty much it. It'll pick up that signature and that vote right there, and your vote will be done. Next, I want to show you some advanced voting. Let's say you have an account that has a whole lot of tokens in it, a lot of value, and you don't want to expose that active key for the process of voting. Well, what you can do is create a custom permission with custom link authorizations that you can then use for voting without exposing any of your active keys and keeping all of your tokens secure. First thing you want to do is go ahead and log in like before, and you want to use the uh, active permission to set up the custom permission. And this is just like before, you go ahead and log in with your wallet, make sure you select the uh, correct account. And this would be the account that actually has all your token value, because you'll need the active permission in order to set up these custom permissions. So once you log in, you can go ahead and head over to the wallet there, and there's this keys and permissions feature that you want to use. From there, click on advanced, and you've already got your two permissions there, we're going to add a third. So when you click on there, we'll call this voting. And we want the parent to be active. If you set it to owner, then uh, you wouldn't be able to vote with your active. But by setting it to the parent to active, you're good to go. And then we paste in the FIO public key of the account that we want to give permission to be able to vote for this account. So it's kind of voting on behalf. So you see here, we're setting up this permission. It's voting. It's active. We're going to say, you know, this permission is going to have special, special features. So next we want to go ahead and set up the link authorizations. Now, in order to figure out what how to do the link authorizations, it might be helpful to head over to the API spec. Um, you can set up a link authorization for anything, but in this example, we're going to do vote producer and we're going to do vote proxy. So this is how you figure that out. If you go into here, you can see it's EOSIO is the account and the name is vote producer. So those are the actual methods on chain that we're going to give custom link authorization permissions. And there it is again, EOSIO for vote proxy. So if you want to figure out what the link authorization should be called, that's how you figure that out. So right here again, we've got that custom permission called voting, and we're going to set up the contract name EOSIO and the contract action vote producer. And then we just click that link authorization button, again, jump over to our wallet and sign it. Now in this example, it's actually going to show an error. It's because I've already done this on this account, but it is just verifying that the link authorization is already set up. So there's no changes there. And if you're doing it this for the first time, it'll come across as green there. Now we're actually also going to set up vote proxy. So that way this permission can either do an individual vote for block producers or it can set a proxy on behalf of this account. And the same kind of thing here. It'll go ahead and uh, set that link authorization up for you. And now once you've got that done, you can actually import the private key again for that account that you've given control and you'll see that it now also has this control for the voting and then once you import that now you see this down here that very bottom one it now has the voting permission so just to conf avoid confusion we're going to go ahead and log out and uh, delete that account there and when we add account we can actually log in with anchor just with that voting permission so we go under here under accounts scan that in and you'll see now we have uh, that just at voting so you have the active is where, and at the bottom it says at voting. So now we're logged in to Blocks.io with just that permission. All it can do is vote, which is pretty cool because that keeps our token secure. So now if we head over to the voting section, we can go ahead and vote just with that permission, and we should be all set. And again, the point of this is so that you can protect your main active permission with all of your tokens. 
I'm going to go ahead and sign this. You can see here at the very bottom it says at voting. So that's how you know it's using the right permission to actually cast that vote for you. And once you cast that vote, it comes through here over onto blocks and votes just as you expect.